has made his way in, clean shaven, and everything, man. I didn't know who was here. It's a good day. <laughs> it was. It's a good day. You came in here like 805. I, wow. The only way it could be so, better, like we talked about earlier, is if it was had a little sun. A maybe lot about, of sun. We need a lot. About of sun. 80 degrees. Yeah. Won't be that today. Dang it. No. Whatever this little system is that came through on, on Sunday. Well, gee, thank you so much. But I'm not giving the weather the rest of the day. So it's going to be off to you, man. <clears throat> Same old stuff. and not changed. Sprinkles, showers, light uh, mist. Aren't you excited? I, I need some sunshine. I need some sunshine, too. And I'm afraid, though, when the sun comes out, just like it did Sunday, my grass, I heard it growing. It's just <laughs> coming right out of the ground. So, yeah. We actually have uh, some grass that we've sown at the fire station, and um, I've, I've been watching it. Uh, you know, I, I go out there two or three times a day and uh, to see if it's grown yet, and it, it hadn't. And uh, I actually drove by Saturday, and it was like, dang, no grass yet. Come by Monday, and it's like, Phew, there's grass. <laughs> yeah, fast. Yeah. Plenty, plenty of grass. And it will get thicker, too. No doubt about it. Anyway, uh, we had a Board of Aldermen meeting last night, and, of course, um, a couple things happened. First off, uh, I guess before we really get into that, Brad, we didn't really mention it last night, but we do have a case of coronavirus that yes. has been detected here uh-huh. by a test. And the health department has gone through all the protocol and uh-huh. isolated the people and contacted everybody they've been in, associated with. And then they put out a notice to the public, and this is where the people were in their last few days where they went, when they were out and about. So hopefully everybody who may feel that they were in t- touch with these people, you've contacted your primary care physician, called them. Do not just show up. Yes. And then tell them this is why you're calling them. And then if you need to get a test, uh, a number of tests were taken. Still no other positives that I know of. Unless, not that I'm aware okay, of. Unless something came in this morning yeah. I did not know. And All right. You know, the, the thing is there, too, that everybody needs to, um, uh, to realize is just because you have come in contact with uh, a person that is positive for COVID, that does not mean that you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Um the the best thing for you to do and we've been getting um several phone calls and and questions um you know if you may have come in contact with this person just watch your symptoms um you know if you start getting a fever if you uh you know start having any of the other symptoms then contact your doctor um but uh you know just just because you've come in contact with uh with somebody with it does not necessarily mean that uh, that you would happen to have it. So just don't need to panic. Yes, exactly. Don't need to panic. Okay. Exactly. You know, we we figured we'd get a case or two or three or four. You sure. never know. Sure. But um, anyway, but I, I think the health department did a tremendous job in jumping right on that, getting yes. it done, getting all the contact information, finding out where they were. I think they they did it as expediently as possible. They knew one evening and by the next afternoon we had all that information so they did you know, did a good job okay very good all right i'm gonna let that go <laughs> <laughs> we got so many other things to talk about yes all right <laughs> and you can laugh about it but it still hurts <laughs> yes it does <laughs> yeah. all right anyway well juliana bermudez was in at the meeting last night at the city hall auditorium by the way and they're using that to keep the social distancing in place uh-huh. um she had an issue with the utility bill now this is not a brand new bill. This is a bill that goes back for the December usage yes. into January. And um, they just put in a new water meter at her location, and everything looked to be fine. She went uh-huh. on vacation, came back, and used 27,000 gallons of water. That is correct. That probably didn't happen, but yeah. <laughs> there'd be a lot of rivers coming out of her house hey, at 27,000 gallons. 27,000 yeah. gallons is a lot you know, of water. Well, it's not the blue hole, but it's <laughs> definitely, that's a lot of water to hide. Okay. Yes. And especially the one day, I think it was almost 7,000 gallons that yeah. she used. No, nah, nah, I don't. I don't even know how many spigots you'd have to have on full blast to get 7,000 gallons of water in one day. Yeah, there'd be, there'd be several. There'd be several. Anyhow, so um, Mark Nash was there and explained uh-huh. it. He had the breakdown. And one of the new things that's coming up with the AMI system, I think, you know, when everything is finally all done, uh-huh. that people are going to enjoy it, you can actually go and check your what's going on with your water yes. and your electric daily. Uh-huh. It'll be available to you. Well, yes. you know, if this it's not available to the public yet, but when it is available, 
then Juliana could have gone on and seen that she used 7,000 gallons of water while she was in St. Croix. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! Merry Christmas! <laughs> anyway, this was all before Christmas, and she wasn't even in town. That really does kind of, you know, we all know, and anything can be wrong. And you could have gotten shocked. You know, could have got hit by lightning. We sure. don't know what happened. But anyway, the meter went crazy for four days. Uh-huh. And then on Christmas Day... Like every other miracle happens on Christmas Day, it fixed itself. Yeah, yeah Merry Christmas. Uh, and that's that's what is really weird about this whole situation is, uh, you know, prior to her uh, leaving, uh, everything was normal. Right. Uh, you know, while she was gone, things went a little haywire. Uh, when she got back, uh, everything was normal. back to normal. Um, Why would you think there's a problem? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we had we had questioned, you know, the possibility of uh, somebody uh, coming over to her house while she was gone. You know, any of that information, and uh, she assured us that that was not possible. Um, we uh, contacted the um, the meter companies and uh, discussed the situation with them. Um, they said that if it was a meter issue, then, uh, it, it would not have just happened during those few days, you know, that this would have happened several times throughout, um, throughout its existence, or as soon as they plugged that meter in, you know, there would have been issues. And so I, I, to be honest with you at this point, we really don't know, um, we really don't have an answer. Um, what we decided to do last night at the meeting, we're going to go over and uh, pull her meter uh, this morning, put a new meter in, and then we're going to send that one off to a laboratory and have it tested to see if we can find out exactly what um, what was going on. But I, you know, the the meter company assures us that um, that this can't happen. That the that water was used somewhere. Uh, and then she assures us that there is nobody that would have had access to that. And so hopefully, you know, after we get this thing sent off, we can get to the bottom of it and, and figure out what's what's going on. You know, I could see, I mean, Christmas time, it really wasn't super cold, but it was cold enough. You would uh, not be out there washing your car. Sure. But even that, you know, the amount of water that we're talking about here, that's what seems crazy. I mean, if it had been 100 gallons... Eh, maybe somebody went over yeah. and stole the water from her, and I can understand that. But uh-huh. 7,000 gallons, uh, that's a lot of water yeah. uh, to be using, especially when you're out of town. And I don't know, you mean, <clears throat> I know we fill tanks up over at the city on 3rd and Grand. They fill that up with those big old tanks of water. And uh, that comes out a lot faster rate than what comes through your pipe. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that takes a half hour to fill up you know, but good thing is what's 500 gallons, 7,000. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I mean, just with, you know, with the, the amount of that and, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that the meter company isn't right. I'm not saying, you know, what it is, but when you have the data like Mark did, uh huh, zero, zero, zero. And then all of a sudden 2,800, 7,000, 28, you know? Yeah. And then here in April on Easter Sunday, it went to 1,200. Mm-hmm. And she was sick and didn't use any water yeah. hardly at all. So what's going on? There's something amiss. Yeah. And it is a piece of machinery. So sure, sure anything can be wrong. So, But you guys uh, did the right thing and then say, well, let's pull that out. You did. Uh, we'll be billing her an average use. Yes. As part of the um, motion that was made uh-huh. that she would use. And I guess you'll break that down daily because she wasn't there. Yeah. In Christmas for a week. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah so you can't really use a lot of water when you're not there maybe have an automatic ice maker that will not be seven thousand gallons it's a lot you're of gonna ice. have a lot of ice <laughs> man. Come on. Uh, now if she had that ice rink in the back built yeah yeah which would be cool i didn't uh, I didn't walk in her backyard. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would have to be about 200 by 85. I'm sure you'd have seen it. <laughs> uh, yeah. that would, You know, I remember um, as, as a child, my dad allowed me to freeze the driveway one time. And you don't realize how many layers of fine mist you got to put down to yeah. get a quarter inch of ice. <laughs> Seven hours of doing that. 
And then when you're done, then you want to go skate, right? Okay. <laughs> that was crazy. We were out there at 2.30 in the morning with lights and everything. And, of course, the next day, the sun was going to come out and melt it all away. <laughs> now, when my dad got the water bill, he said, that'll be the last time. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, it is. It's it's a lot. Of, even though it's a fine mist, you're using, <clears throat> he said, I used about 500 gallons of water. Yeah. I think, like, well, yeah, probably. Yeah, but look at all the fun that you got to have. One night. One night. <laughs> <laughs> one night yeah I, I couldn't believe he let me do it that was the big thing but he did and uh yeah but i didn't ask again after no the bill. Uh, i thought i was just go back to the ice rink and you know skate there all right so anyway so that was a hearing of persons so that that was taken care of uh-huh. in the consent agenda <clears throat> excuse me um it was approved but in the consent agenda, the sales tax revenues for the month of April came in. In the uh, normal sales tax revenue, the, the 1% sales tax, the half cent capital improvement sales tax, and then the three-eighths of a cent park and rec sales tax. And Brad, in all cases, those sales tax were down. Yes. And uh, what uh, and then when we had, uh, City Administrator Ray Walden did mention when his report came that you heard about those and uh-huh. down some as much as 4%. Yeah. Um, that in the upcoming budget, going to be very conservative numbers used. That that money we get in April, stuff from February and in March. Uh huh. So that was before the coronavirus hit. You can imagine what it's going to be like when you start getting July and August. Yeah, and you know we we knew that um, that we were going to start seeing some decreases uh, in that money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, that's that's not just for us. That's going to be everybody across everybody. the board. Uh, so, you know, especially with us coming into uh, a new budget year in, in July, uh, we're really going to have to watch our budget. And, uh, you know, normally uh, for the city with as many accounts and, and fund balances and everything that we have, uh, budgeting is not a fun uh, process, um, but uh, this year uh, it, it's going to be a little bit worse, and um, you know we we don't even really know what to expect, and so we have to uh, we'll have, really have to watch our our p's and q's through this thing, and uh, make sure that we're just getting the essentials in the budget and uh, kind of go from there. So. The ironic thing was the city was down, but the county was up. The county had an increase in sales tax over last year. City had a decrease over last year, uh, and a substantial one. And a lot of this is just timing. Yeah. So it doesn't mean the same timing for the county sales tax as it does for the city tax. So whenever they get paid and distributed, that's when it is. So, for example, for Park and Rec in 2019, they had 29000 That was way over 2018s and over 2020s. Why? Timing. Yeah. So it may take a little bit away from your May payment or could have just been something in your April payment was low. and you, I mean, your your March payment was low and it makes up for it. So, again, but year to date, though, they are down. Uh-huh. And that's what, the, that's what we have to watch for. So, again, just watching that, being very cautious. But it will be, a, as Ray said, it will be a lot tighter budget. Yes. Come to on fiscal year 21. So for the city, so it's going to be going to be one of those things that people are going to have to uh, uh, watch because not that the services will be cut and everything, but it probably won't be as many streets done, may yeah. not be as many projects done uh, unless everything really turns around quickly. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Always make a budget adjustment if you get more money in. Yes. We like getting more money in. More money is a good thing. <laughs> Just doesn't happen enough. But anyway, so. but uh, those projections will be. Very conservative in the yes. upcoming budget. All right. Um, also, uh, Ray mentioned because of obviously we don't have a new we don't have new alderman in yet. Uh huh. And that should usually happen first Tuesday in April. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We have not had the budget committee meetings yet. The finance committee and the capital improvements project committee and all those good things. Uh, still going to have those, but they're going to yes. be. Pretty rapid fire here pretty soon, it right, is. probably after Memorial Day. 
and before the election. But uh, what Mr. Walden did say is that all the candidates would be invited to be on top of these as much as possible. Uh, yes, because as soon as they, as soon as the election hits, um, you know, in in theory, the uh, the new alderman will be sworn in. Uh, that second meeting in June. June the 15th. Uh, yeah, and, you know, when that happens, we really need to be approving a budget uh, that meeting. And so that kind of uh, puts us uh, behind the eight ball there. And so, you know, there's several things that, that we've got to get worked out between now and then. And, uh, you know, with the whole COVID thing, that's just thrown um, mm-hmm. everything for a loop. But, you know, we're, uh, we're taking it a day at a time and uh, getting that managed and, and we'll be okay. Very good. Yeah. And the thing is, you're probably going to have a special meeting anyway. <laughs> sure. Usually we have one near yeah. the end because there's always something that shows up that last week of <laughs> June, you know, that either gets paid or needs to be paid or isn't going to be paid. Uh-huh. And then it's going to move into the next fiscal year where that budget has to be changed. Well, if you're going to remove something out of that budget before you approve it, you may as well do it. So a lot of times they have a a, a meeting, not necessarily on the last day of June, but near the last yeah. day of June. It has been on the last day of June at 4 o'clock sure. in the afternoon before, too. So yeah. I've seen that happen when they were trying to get some things done and uh, make sure that they were in the budget. Uh-huh. But, you know, had to wait on people. Don't you hate that? You got to wait on people to give you answers. I do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you're waiting, and a day this is it, man. I need yeah. an answer by today. Yeah. So very good. All right. There was an airport board meeting held last week. Uh huh. There's a few things that they they were addressing, obviously, but some of those are uh, leasing of the hangars, and uh-huh. uh, Mr. Walden said so they're working on that wording yes. for those lease agreements. And there's also um, virtually, I'll say every two years, it seems. I'm not going to say every year because I'm not. I won't go out on a limb that far. But working with MoDOTs Aviation, usually uh-huh. we get a grant of some kind to do some work. We had the lights replaced here, not two years ago yes and we're working on a taxi lane project uh-huh well we were to be working on a taxi lane project but the <laughs> rains came the rains came yeah uh, so that has delayed that project but that taxi lane is going to be the old ones tore up we're gonna put a new one in and create a new six unit t hanger yes that is correct uh that is going to be a a much needed uh, improvement for the airport, uh, an exciting improvement there. Um, but hopefully, um, we'll, we'll catch a time where the rain subsides a little bit. Uh, when? so I don't know when, <laughs> I don't know. I, like I said, I need some sunshine. Where's but... that crystal ball? <laughs> <laughs> but if, if the rains will work with us, then we can get the engineers here and, uh, and start working on that, uh, and those design, design work and all that. So. Yeah, just have to, the weather has to cooperate a little bit because they have to go out there and tear all that up, and that's not a lot of fun to do when it's really wet. No, not at all. You make for extra work, won't it? You end up up tearing up more equipment and tearing up more uh, property than what you intend, and it's just a mess. So We don't want to do that. No. All right, and uh, Mr. Walden did also say at that meeting there's still some interest in extending the runway. Now, they have extended that runway twice. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, had to take out some uh, trees and go a little further south. And then they also went a little further north, almost to the point that they had to move the highway. Yeah. <laughs> My only thing now, I don't know where you're going to go with the extension now. If you're going to go longer, you may have to put a tunnel. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be cool have 32 go under the runway? That would be pretty neat. Or call, what? the runway underneath the highway. I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> but it would be really cool. That would be really dangerous, especially <laughs> when they're landing and they don't quite make it low enough. You know, what do you got? You know, low clearance ahead for the pilots coming in? Yeah, it would be different. Yeah. We'd be the only one around. Yeah. Where would we you may- put that height sign? Gosh. I don't know. A big pole. Just like up the in Jetsons there. had that little thing floating in the yeah. air. That? <laughs> little floating in there. Slow down, exit here, whatever. <laughs> Good stuff. People out there, but I don't remember the Jetsons. Is it, is it Friday? We're a little slap happy yeah, today. I'm you what. <laughs> After the meeting last night, there's reasons. Yeah. Um, no, it, uh, but anyway, the runway extension. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to be facetious about it. Uh-huh. There really is not any more room at our airport. 
define now what we have as our legal boundaries of the airport to add much more room. I think maybe 10 feet more toward the highway might be about it, but that's yeah. not what they're talking about when they talk about extension. They're talking, you know, quarter mile or more. It would just, it's just going to have to, you know, there's interest in it. Sure. And, and we do have, um, for those of you that are not around the airport much, um, we do have quite a bit of traffic in and out of the airport. Um, and we're limited uh, because of our the length of our airport um, on the size plane mm -hmm. that can land there. And so, uh, you know, the we've been talking about um, uh, extensions of the airport for, for years, uh, you know, and, and basically, like you said, about the only way that I can see that we could do it at this point is if we would acquire... Uh, more property somewhere right. yeah. um or you know that will help you do that yeah somehow. and so you know what that looks like we don't know yet um but uh i'm sure we'll be diving into that um before too long yeah more of the uh, corporations have private jets uh -huh. they used to have prop planes prop planes would be no problem but a jet i uh, moved pretty quick yeah and that would be pretty tight yeah it, put that it down, really but, would you know especially with a bridge uh-huh <laughs> you know underneath that bridge yeah Ooh. well and you know there's there's also medical um uh planes if you extended the runway that that we could make access or have access to uh -huh. you know as well and so there's there's several options there that uh would really help us uh could help our economy uh you know and our businesses in town yeah. if we could do that but right. and uh, bring in some more supplies because yeah. most more supply planes can't come in here yeah, yeah and so it's it's just a matter of trying to figure out you know exactly how we how we do that very good okay so there's just interest in that there's no definitive plans and then they'll be talking about that further yes all right we had electronics collection on saturday for uh -huh. all those computers and your monitors and tvs and weed eaters and old tires and stuff like that anything with a cord or in on a battery you could take over there and get rid of yes. somebody brought in a projection tv that was a big old dog i don't know who <laughs> unloaded that but man, I saw that thing stand out there. I said, "Those." I remember those. They used to weigh like a ton. Uh huh. <laughs> oh Lord. But anyway, yeah. But there was a lot of stuff out there. I know when I, I dropped some stuff off, had a monitor go out that morning. As a matter of fact, couldn't have timed it better. You know. <laughs> See, my luck, it goes out the day after. Yeah, I had that happen a few <laughs> years back. Yeah, I got it done. And two days later, I had two dead monitors like, well, what? wait wait a minute <laughs> i just took all that over there <laughs> now anyway but uh no but you know what i'm saying is yeah. uh, i had a monitor die that morning and so yeah i was going over there anyway I had an old weed eater and you know a couple old computers and a dead laptop and <laughs> took the hard drives out remember when you do that guys take your hard drives out yes. there's a lot of personal information on there and if you take those hard drives out and the memory sticks uh-huh it's always a good thing to take out the memory sticks. But take out the memory sticks, even though many of your old computers have 512. <laughs> yeah. Not much you're going to do with them anymore, but you can throw them away. <laughs> uh, but if you get some of these new ones that have 2 gig uh -huh. in them, you know, if you already got the like a laptop, some of those are just really small and compact at 2 gig, you can actually put that into your, your other uh, laptop you have if it has an expansion joint and uh, you can stick that in there sure and get yourself more memory they get into a gaming laptop there you go whatever <laughs> never had that. but in the electronics collection uh, was all i always feel it's a success uh, -huh. uh ray did not have the collection numbers on they usually give it to you in pounds or tons yes one or the other and i uh, hadn't got those those numbers back yet brad it's hard to believe with all this rain and nastiness, we got Memorial Day coming up on Monday. Yes. Hard to believe that, but the city's preparing for it uh -huh. in a number of ways. That yeah. is correct. Such as? Such as working on this cemetery. Um, this time of year, we uh, bring all the available crews uh, over to the cemetery and get all of it uh, mowed, weed-eated, cleaned up, and, uh, and ready to go for... Uh, for Memorial Day ceremonies, maybe that, drained. Yeah, drain. <laughs> we instead of mowing, we may have to squeegee all the water off of the cemetery. Oh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, the crews are uh, currently working at the cemetery and hopefully finishing those up and or that up in the next day or two. Uh, 
to get that uh, looking pretty for the for Memorial Weekend. Yeah, right. And there will be a lot of ceremonies out there. We yes. all know that the uh, Legion has one out there, the uh -huh. BMW and the Legion, and that will be on Memorial Day. Also, uh, the city offices will be closed on Monday, Memorial Day yes. as well. All right, we also want to remind everybody that wasn't mentioned last night at the meeting, but and I'm surprised because the person that was there was on the line, <laughs> that um, the pool opens on Saturday. Yes. By gosh, by golly. You know, we're going to be one of the few communities that is actually going to open their pool. Uh, that is true. Um, you know, we've we've seen several communities uh, around uh, pretty close to us that have decided to close their pools for the year. And, uh, you know, we've been really watching CDC uh, and their guidelines, um, and uh, we feel that, that we can open that thing uh, up and, and we can uh, sanitize and, and keep everybody safe. Uh, so, you know, and, and we really need to, if we can, uh, keep activities going in the community and, and give people a, a, a safe option uh, you know, to be able to get out of the house and, and do some things. Exactly. So there's still going to be the six foot distancing. Uh -huh. That'll be at the concession stand. That'll be on, you know, on obviously on the, uh, on the tubes and things uh -huh. of that nature and the high dives. Kids need to be, you know, it's going to be rough to keep them that way, but they're going to get excited and they're going to get right behind somebody. But we'll try and keep that going. Also, the benches, some of the benches have been removed so that uh -huh. nobody will be sitting next to each other on the benches. Some of the tables have been spread out a little bit. So, doing the best they can and they will sanitize it as best they can as well so uh again we will have a pool open on saturday and i'm hoping the sun comes out <laughs> partly sunny 84 there you go we'll take it yeah now it's gonna be possibly some rain that morning but the pool doesn't open on noon uh monday through saturday noon to six it's open and then on sunday one to six okay very good all right Sounds very good. good so and then i've uh, sent a note to Melissa and hopefully we'll get a better definition of those rules so we can get it out to the public and yeah. let them know ahead of time. Pool passes are available at the community center at the Army. You can book your pool parties there as well. And they have uh, aerobics still. They're going to have swim uh -huh. lessons. Everything is going to be pretty much status quo, but there will be some new rules in effect. All right? Sure. Okay, very good. Amazing. It's amazing the pool season's here already. It is. It is. I'm, I'm excited, though. I know, but I mean, I felt like May just started yesterday, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's Memorial Day. Uh -huh. This is the earliest Memorial Day can be. So Sure. So it's an early one. Yeah. So anyway, so we hope people will get out and enjoy their pool. Absolutely. And remember that the virus doesn't sit well in sunshine, so, you know, there you go. out there. Anybody puts it out on something and their son that hits it, won't be there. <laughs> it's like, well, what, a minute, what, 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 two and a half seconds or something if it's exposed to the direct sunshine? And yeah, I'm not up, sure. What I the... think something like that. Two and a half seconds. Well, let's well, open. We, we don't want any of it anyway. Yeah. Let's leave it all out. Okay. So, uh, as Brad was mentioning about a draft letter that uh, we're going to kind of just touch on a little bit. A draft letter is going to be going out with utility bills, and yes, utility bills have not been sent out yet, but yes. some are going out today. Uh -huh. we, yeah, because it's been requested that happen, and so some will go out today, and many more will go out before the end of the week. I'm not sure that all will be done by the end of the week, but many will be getting their bill. You will get a draft letter in that bill, and you're going to get, actually, it's going to be pretty thick. Uh, a little piece of correspondence yeah to <laughs> because you're going to get not only the draft letter that we you see right here yeah <laughs> see it <laughs> but also uh which has your options those options will then be explained on your second page or what yes. they'll call attachment one you know but you will have which will be pertinent to your account yes now you have the option of choosing which one of those you would like to do. Uh huh. And option one is that 5% rebate. We talked about that last time. Yes. <clears throat> so you can pay your whole bill and get 5% off, which is not a bad deal. It is not. If you, if you can do that, more power to you and do that. Option two will be a budget billing plan based on your average monthly bills for the period May 2019 through April 2020. 
plus the listed total balance due divided by 12. Yes. Okay, your adjustment will be made with the May 2021 bill to reflect actual consumption. Uh huh. So you have that. Then option three reflects consumption for April 2020 plus the balance owed for the consumption since the prior bill on March 31st divided by 12. So the future bills will actually reflect your actual consumption in addition to the prior balance payment amount. Yes. And, you know, so basically what we're doing, we're, we're bringing everybody up to current where you're, you're going to pay current monthly bills right. every month, regardless of the option that you choose. Uh, and then what you will see attached to that bill, uh, depending on which option, if you use option two or option three, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to divide those uh, three months that we're behind mm-hmm. um, into 12, uh, and then whatever that number is will be added on to uh, your, your current bill. Current bill. Uh, so, you know, that, that gives everybody time. Uh, it, it shouldn't be a big burden, uh, you know, to get that, uh, to get that caught up that way, uh, you know, and so we can, we can stretch that out to a year uh, and uh, kind of hopefully help everybody out right. that way. Now, in, in, so in doing this, and I know people have been cornering you and Ray, and there's still some issues with some software. Uh-huh. We know that, and that they're still working on that. But basically, all these calculations for every single account in the city have to be hand done. That is correct. To make sure that, and for every option. So here's your 5% option. Uh-huh. Here's your your one option two, and here's your option three. And everybody will see exactly what that's going to be. In their bill when they get it. Yes, that is correct. Well, the city sends out a lot of bills. Uh, we do. <laughs> and so there, that's why this has kind of it's been a calculation. It's crunch time. And, you know, even even a football team of accountants would have trouble trying to get all those calculations in. It's It's been a chore. And fortunately, there's uh, people that are smarter than I am working on this to, to try to get it done. Um, I've seen your math. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all of the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet tables, all that kind of stuff that's, that's going into uh, trying to, to get this and make it work is uh, mind blowing to me. Um, but you know, our, our goal is, and we've got to make sure that the numbers that we're sending out is accurate. Right. Uh, and so we've, we've been, uh, going over this and over this and over this and over this to, to make sure that the information that we're sending out is accurate, that the numbers are accurate. Uh, so, so we can punch out a, a quality, uh, product with this. And so Hopefully, like you said, uh, we we still uh, we still have uh, some issues with a few meters, um, and that uh, we really don't have an issue with the meter, I should say. But when the meters were put in, uh, are different, and so those calculations are going to be a little bit different. Uh, so we're we're trying to work through that process as well, and yeah. so. Hopefully, by the end of this week, we'll have the majority of all of them out, but I, I can't promise that we're going to have all of them out. Right. And also, still have a few manual water meters that have to yes. be read. Uh-huh. Uh, and hopefully, according to what uh, Public Works Director Mark Nash said, that the modules are now being pre- fitted and prepared by Neptune to get yes. everything done. So hopefully, within the next two to three weeks, they'll be back in town and replacing all those uh-huh. old meters. And then after that's all done, Brad, then Sight and Sound's going to come in and, and readjust the heads of those meters. They should be ground level. Yes. Many of you see those are about five inches above ground level. Uh-huh. Um, don't hit them with your lawnmower. <laughs> and, you know, and that's one of the things we had to switch Please. over. <laughs> yeah. We had to switch over to um, our, our prior lids. Um, were metal lids. Uh, they didn't work well with the antennas for the AMI system. Uh, and so we had to go to more of a composite uh, style lid and riser on those. Polyurethane, isn't it? Uh, poly something? Polypropylene, maybe? I don't remember. Poly um, something. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, more, it's a plastic. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah it's, it's not a metal. Right. Uh, so um, the, in doing that, 
depending on um, the height of uh, the existing, uh, there was some of them are sticking up out of the ground a little higher than than what they should. Uh, so they those are supposed to be uh, getting adjusted and and moved back down. But uh, yeah, be careful with them with your lawnmower if yours is sticking up kind of high. Uh, don't uh, don't please hit them. don't run over it. Yes. <laughs> Please. Please. And damage it. Yes. If you want to run over it, it's fine as long as you don't cut it. Uh-huh. That's be, but anyway, please be careful with that. So, again, uh, working with getting all that out just as quickly as possible. Also, um, possibly we'll have, with a, uh, Ray has said, they're working with a building software vendor. Uh-huh. Your bills will format will probably change yes. here. Probably over the summer sometime. Uh-huh. They're working with our software vendor right now to try and figure out the best way to do this because there will be more information available on your bill yes. than currently is, so it will change. So just be, don't be scared to get a different looking bill uh-huh. and just throw your hands in the air and say, you know, then just if you get one of those, it won't be for a while yet. But then uh, just call the utility office and, yes. and have them explain it to you. And I'm sure there'll be an explanation sheet in there as well uh-huh. once we make that change. But that would be in the future, not this month. Yeah. I don't know. Enough going on this month. You know, <laughs> need that in there as well. So anyway, but look, be looking for your electric bill, uh huh, water bill, trash bill, sewer bill. Yes. It will be coming soon yes uh and for many of you it'd probably be coming in a day or two uh-huh mm, some of you if they mail it by friday may not get it till next week okay that is correct all right very good okay we'll move forward moving on all right and uh let let's just be honest with you this this whole billing situation and i know it's been frustrating for everybody uh-huh so we're asking you it's not the alderman's fault. It's not anybody. It, it, basically, what the problem is, it's been a software problem between two companies. It is. And, and, and that's really putting the pressure on the city trying to get some of this done by hand because they can't communicate. It is. And, and that's what's the frustrating part. I mean, we um, uh, there's nobody in town that wants this done any quicker than I do. Uh, or the other aldermen, and unfortunately, we're in a situation to where uh, the issues that we're having, we have no control over. Um, you know, we we done our homework before the AMI system uh, came into place. Uh, we've got our our AMI system, which is NextGrid, and then we have our actual billing software, which is uh, Encode. Um, you know, and and we we ask the questions. Have you worked with this company before? And other Has cities you, have these two. Yes, it works and, fine. And that's the that's the issue is you know when we discuss that they you know yes we've worked together. There's there's not going to be any issues. And so you know we thought we were okay. Um, well, when we get into the middle of this, apparently um, our uh, encode billing system is different from. Any other, other city, cities yeah. that they have worked with, and so a lot of the program files is different than what what the AMI system has dealt with, mm-hmm. and so we're having to go through and try to figure out those files, uh, trying to figure out you know how we switch those to where everybody can communicate, and uh, it's it's been very frustrating. Uh, it's been a, a very rough process. Um, I'm still excited about the AMI project because uh, it, after we get through the end of it, we get the IntelliHome portal mm-hmm. up and running, and, and people can see that. Um, that's going to be huge, and, and we've already on the city side have been able to uh, bring people in that's had questions about their bill, yeah, pull them. up their home, and it, it shows every 15 minutes. It takes uh, readings uh, from your home and graphs them as far as what your electric's doing, what your water's doing, and, and that type of thing. And, you know, we've been able to pull those those readings up. And, um, uh, you know, we had uh, spoke with one individual, and it's like, well, you got, you got a big spike at 1130 yesterday. And they're like, well, we just got home and it was cold and we turned on the furnace, you know, and it, it it's amazing how accurate 
that information is, uh, you know, to, to not only help us, but the customer as well yeah. to see what their homes and everything are doing. And so, you know, this is still a great project. Um, I'm really excited to get to the other end of this project, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I, I know there's been frustration as far as bills and, and that type of thing. But uh, trust me, we've been feeling it on our end as well. And, and we're, we are doing everything possible uh, that we can do to hurry and get this thing through to where we can get back to a normal cycle. And basically what this is right now, Brad, is with this software glitch, COVID-19 prohibited them from sending anybody down. That is correct. You know, and so you're stuck for the last six and a half weeks. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, we've got this problem, but they and they can try and do it remotely, but until they see it physically uh-huh. right here, it's gonna be hard to fix. Yeah, and it, there's just been so many things that's um, that's been against us, uh, you know, through this whole process. That uh, you know, when we started it, uh, wasn't there, <laughs> um, you know, and and it just seems like uh, you know you get one issue fixed and there's ten more. Uh, standing at the door waiting on you. Um, but uh, we're working through those the best we can. We're supposed to be having some communication with the software companies today uh, to see if uh, they have uh, the, the travel restrictions have lifted uh, enough to where we can get some people down here. Um, you know, and that's, we're to the point to where it's like, okay, we want everybody down here, everybody in the same room and nobody's going home till we get this thing fixed. Um, you know, it is where we're at, but unfortunately with the COVID thing, um, I, I don't know that that's possible, but that's what we're striving that's the goal. for. Yeah. That's the goal. And trust me, nobody wants it done more than the office personnel in there because they're tired of crunching that. Uh, exactly, and yeah. you know, and that's and that's the not frust- anything else done. They're not, and and that's the frustrating part is when, um, you know, when the software doesn't work, uh, you know, they're having to do all this by hand. Uh, you know, we've got uh, some of the girls are, are working six days a week. They're bringing their computers home, uh, doing stuff at, at home. Uh, you know, and it's it's just a rough situation. Um, they are uh, stressed to the max, um, you know, and we, we strive to put out a quality product. Um, and it's been, uh, very difficult the last couple of months, uh, dealing with the situations that we, that we have, um, to, to put out that product. And, uh, but, but we're trying the best that we can. Yeah. It's the process is what it is right now because of uncontrollable circumstances yes just one of those things yeah boy you'd hate to have to do it again oh my goodness you know because but hopefully hopefully like after today you might be able to finally because a lot of the cities are now relaxing Uh these restrictions so hopefully you can get some people down here and get this done yeah and and like i said it's not an issue of uh you know just somebody sitting on their hands not doing anything um, that's, that's not the issue at all. And, and everybody, especially on the city level, you know, has been, uh, working, uh, doing mm-hmm. everything that we can possibly do, mm-hmm. you know, to, to get this thing fixed. Next so. to taking a baseball bat and hitting it. That, that may be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens Make today. Sure use a metal bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that. Okay. I don't want a wood bat getting damaged. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They're too expensive. Mm-hmm. All right, very good. So anyway, so be looking for your utility bills, guys. Just relax, and you know it's uh, it, it's not something. Trust me, the city didn't intend for this to happen, but it it's can you know it's been a it's been a a nightmare for all of them, and they're but they are will emer- they'll emerge. Yes. Just give it time. It just takes a little extra time. All right. Resolution number 10, 2020 was an agreement with uh, NB West Contracting for Nova Chip. Everybody's heard about Nova Chips, uh-huh. you know. And Nova Chips are a real good way of paving our streets now. A lot better than trying to get three inches of asphalt put on there for $400 million. <laughs> uh, gee, I, I mean, and, and you know what? I looked at the price of asphalt. You know, with gas, oil, at $24, mm-hmm. it only went down $3. Yeah. What? I it, The pricing of asphalt is just ridiculous. I was thinking, you know, maybe because when the oil went down so low, maybe we can get asphalt at a good price. Uh-huh. 
Not so much. Well, I didn't see it, and if so, I'm, and maybe nobody's buying it, and they can't. They've got all this tied up. I don't know, but boy, I thought three dollars. Yeah, three dollars. Well, that's a square foot, but three dollars is still three dollars. It should yeah. be like ten uh-huh. compared to what it was. Anyhow, but Nova chips are good. They're a very good product. Yes, and this works out very well. The city has done this before. Uh-huh. Those streets have lasted a long time, and yes, these are the ones that get a lot more traffic. Uh huh. And the Nova Chips are a very good thing. And Be West out of uh, Sullivan, they do contracting work, and they do this, and they're one of the better companies at this. Uh-huh. I submitted the contract, and the city was voting on that last night to accept that contract, but another wrinkle. Another wrinkle. Uh, How many more can you get in the month of May? I don't know. <laughs> don't ask. Stan. I don't ask. Yeah. Don't ask. Um we, you know, we have been talking about uh, Nova Chip for the last several meetings and trying to get bids and and figure out, you know, if if we can combine uh, this year's budget money with next year's budget money, mm-hmm. uh, you know, looking at the the bang for our buck and and that type of thing. And so, um, in doing that, this resolution um, was for installing approximately forty thousand square yards of the Nova chip and they gave us a price for seven dollars and fifty cents um per square yard now in the past that price was good for the project yes and that's why we went ahead or we wanted to go ahead and lock that price in um, because it was such a good price well in the contract that they sent us um that uh was brought up last night that pricing is only good till the end of may um which guaranteed price guaranteed yeah. pricing till the till the end of may i mean it still may be good but it's more like what price are they going to charge us june 1st uh, exactly and you know unfortunately with as much rain as we've had um a lot of people don't understand and to be honest with you i didn't understand um before we do these streets they have to check the moisture underneath the street Mm -hmm. um if there's moisture underneath the street then we cannot um go through and pave it or put nova chip on it or or whatever it's yeah it's going to come apart and uh your money is just going to go to waste and so um to be safe we really need to wait till uh july August, you know, somewhere in there to put this stuff down uh, to where we're we're into our, the dry part of our summer to where we make sure everything. Let's hope. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with our weather here lately, I don't know what this summer is going to be like. But um, you know, we we've got to find a, a dry stretch to make sure that that base under that street is is good and dry for us to put this down. Um, so with them putting that information in their contract. Um, we can't guarantee that this is going to be the price in July or August or whatever. So um, the the board uh, really didn't um, want to approve this, and actually they didn't approve it last night uh, because of that. And so we're going to try to go back to them and uh, lock down a price uh, that will be good um, when it comes time to to do this work but they also included in there which i had never heard before the possibility if the city didn't pay on time that they would file a mechanics lien and i'm thinking <clears throat> that didn't even really make any sense I and mean, they we've uh-huh. dealt with mb west before yes and the city's always paid them uh-huh. why would i mean unless that's a standard contract for somebody for their house or something of that nature uh-huh but city streets you're gonna encumber a city street with a mechanics lien yeah yeah, it it I didn't, didn't uh, get that. It, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, and so we've asked our uh, city attorney uh, to get involved and to look at this contract, um, and then we're going to go back and talk to MB West and see if we can get some uh, some actual real numbers, uh, and then see what we can do about that uh, that mechanics lien right. as well. So let's explain with you. As you mentioned, the city has to be dry. I mean, the streets have to be dry in the uh-huh. city for the city can do this work. So let's just let's give a hypothetical example. Uh huh. All right. We all have seen rain. <laughs> yeah. And lots of it. All right. You know, in the summertime when it rains and your streets out there in the sun is baking, we get one of those showers that comes over, and then as soon as that shower comes back, the sun comes back out. And what do you see coming off that street? 
Mm -hmm. Steam, right? You yeah. see that steam come up? Well, the water that gets in the cracks, which is why you're doing the Nova chip, uh -huh. is to reseal all those cracks. That water's down deep. Yeah. That's not coming up. All you're seeing is what's sitting on the asphalt. It's rising quickly. You yes. need about three or four days of that sun baking on that sucker uh -huh. to get all that steam out of those cracks because yes. that water in there is much cooler uh -huh. than what was on the surface. Yes. <clears throat> so when you don't do that, and you let's just say you had a little, it's wet underneath there, and you put the Nova chip down, and then we get one of these 105 degree days in the shade, uh -huh. you know what's going to happen. That steam wants to come up. That street's getting hot. Well, it can't come out. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we've got to make sure that that is... Uh, and when it does come out, it cracks. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. Yeah, we don't and want so, that to happen. Uh, you know, we just, we really have to watch. And like I said, I was really excited about um, this bid. It, it was a really good price. Um and and we would be able to do quite a bit of work uh, with that. Yeah, more than um, what was expected. Yeah, and so uh, hopefully that uh, you know after we speak with them, we can get all of that ironed out and and get a, a another good price as well. Yeah. And when even when they gave that price, the price of oil at that time was in the thirties. Yeah, now it's in the twenties. You'd think it'd be better. Yeah, exactly. But again, we go back to the asphalt, three dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so that has been that was denied last night, as Brad said, uh -huh. and they will re try and get that done and redone for the June first meeting, and hopefully have a better uh, outcome. Yes, so we can get things started. Yes, that's a shame. That, uh, that's I don't I don't remember that with MB West ever happening before. You know, I don't either, and and we've never had an issue with uh, with that company. Uh, you know, and and even when. Uh, the city had them do work. If we had had any problems, they were always there to to fix and, and repair whatever needed to be done. Um, never had an issue. Uh, so hopefully we can get this worked out. And it sounds like they changed their contract a little bit. Yeah. Maybe. So. Or maybe they sent you the wrong contract. Maybe it's a contract for municipalities, and they gave you one for, uh, you know, just construction. And, you know, hopefully that's the case. Yeah. Um, and and I, I really do hope that that is... That is true. Okay, so. very good. Moving on to resolution number 11, 2020. Oh, this is, a, this is for an application to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources for the Volkswagen Trust Government Truck Program. People uh -huh. are probably saying, what? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You know, a few years back, Volkswagen was found guilty of tampering and lying about emissions. Uh -huh. And they had to pay a big fine. That yes. big fine went to every state. Uh-huh. That big fine is being redistributed to remove emissions because uh -huh. Volkswagen lied about it. Yeah, uh, that is correct. And so uh, there is an application that uh, that we had to approve to be able to move forward with this uh, with this grant. And basically, what happens is they will take older vehicles mm -hmm. uh, that you have, um, or, or if you have older vehicles. Uh, you have to give them the price of a truck to replace that vehicle that meets your needs. Uh, right. And then if you're approved for the grant, the Volkswagen Trust um, will pay for half of that vehicle. Um, That's now, a lot of money. It is, especially, you know, when you're talking about dump trucks. Um, in this case, we're talking about a uh, Digger Derrick truck mm. for the electric department. That's big money. Um, big money. Uh, you know, and so it would definitely be beneficial uh, for us if we could uh, get this. Our Like our Digger Derrick truck is a uh, 1997 model. Uh, it still currently works, um, but they're having difficulties finding parts uh, for them if, if something breaks down on it. Uh, and, and we're not necessarily talking about the motor side of things. The it's more of the electronics that uh, that works on the uh, the digger 
and and that type of thing, uh, that part of the truck. I'm sure that board with the electronics are is like your computer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> try and find a computer board from 97. Uh, yeah, and now. so um, this resolution was to uh, to be able to apply for that grant. Right. Not, um, doesn't mean you're going to get it. Uh, exactly. Right. And so there are stipulations that go along with that. Uh, if we get that grant, uh, they send us a solution to dump into the motor that actually seizes the motor of that vehicle up uh, to where it can't, that motor can't be rebuilt uh, anymore. Uh, so we can sell the vehicle for scrap. Uh, you know, if another utility company uh, would want to buy the dump truck, uh, you know, they could, they could buy it for, for scrap and put a new motor in it or whatever the case may be, um, whatever they want to use it for. But the motor does have to be inoperable and uh, not repairable uh, in order to get this this grant. And so the uh, the vote last night was to uh, go ahead and apply for this uh, uh, for this grant and that did pass. When you start talking big money, you're talking about that Freightliner diesel flatbed with a Terex Commander Digger Derek for two hundred and forty eight thousand. Dollar. That's a quarter of a million dollars. That is correct. That's a big truck. And but then it's going to last 20 years. Sure. You know, now, if you only had to pay half, it becomes almost affordable. Yes. Um, and, you know, the, the situation with this truck compared to the truck that we have, um, we have a lot of utility poles that's in people's yards. Mm-hmm. Um, during storms or any time we do a pole change out, um, we end up tearing up people's yards, trying to get the trucks in and out, uh, cause they're so heavy. Uh, this truck is going to be a lighter truck, uh, that's going to be easier to get in and out of those yards. Um, also some of the transformers that we have, um, we don't have the lifting capacity. Especially the newer ones we've had out at yes. Walmart and things uh-huh. of that nature. We, our, our current truck doesn't have the lifting capacity to unload those or to set those. And so what we end up having to do is um, contract with a, another um, electric company to help us do that, uh, which is an added expense, or we have to uh, rent a crane uh, to set those as well. And so uh, with the new truck, that would also give us the availability to uh, to set those transformers that we would need to set. Yeah, yeah this uh, way that uh, Mark Nash explained it, it won't have all the extra weight uh-huh. on these trucks as they used to do when you have all the tools and everything on there and the extra yeah. poles, and this would have all that. So, yes. Very good. So that was approved for the application. Um, didn't hear about timing on that application is there uh, did anybody ever say when we'd ever hear back on it the uh, city is working with the mrpc on yes this to get it done but no i didn't see anything in there about timing it. i have not heard any kind of a deadline okay well i, I did have to get back to you now so all right very good so we'll wait and see if that happens now when if the if they should be awarded this grant the city could still turn it down uh-huh that is correct i mean if the budget numbers next year come in so low that they say we just can't do it, and you just can't do it. Yes. All right. Very good. That will be left up to the aldermen at that time once they know. Uh huh. All right. So one of the things that uh, we remember doing this about sixty days ago, you did it. I didn't do it. You did it. <laughs> is declare a state of an emergency for the city of Salem, and uh, in doing this, this allowed the city to set temporary protocols, which is the waiving of late fees, the shutoffs, the things of that nature that uh, would be different, uh-huh. would not be different unless there is a reason to do that. Yes. So those practices and protocols have now been extended. Yes. Uh, the deadline for the original um, uh, bill was May 22nd. And so basically what this one does is it extends it until we vote to say that we're, we're canceling that. Yeah, so We're done. Yes. It'll be a board decision at yes, that point. Yes, that is correct. All right, very good. So the the declaration of emergency for the city of Salem has been extended. Guys, really, that's more of a benefit to you. Absolutely. Because you still don't have late fees. They still can't be shut off. Uh-huh. And um, 
But we know, we all know that there's still a lot of people out there still struggling, trying to get back to normal. And this absolutely, is, it just it's a slow grind. Is what it, it is, is. A slow grind. All right, Salem Housing Authority Board appointment. The last meeting, they had submitted a letter to appoint Richard Labrash to uh-huh. the board. Unfortunately, we didn't know which one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are two. There is a junior and senior, and so there was question uh, of that, and so we asked them to uh, submit a clarification on that. So they brought it back, and it is Richard Labrash Sr., uh, and that, uh, that appointment was approved last night to the Salem Housing uh, Authority Board. And that was it. You went into closed session, no decisions made, I'm assuming? No decisions. Just discussion. Just discussion. All right, very good. That's Mayor Brad Nash uh, bringing you a look at what happened last night at the Board of Aldermen meeting and giving you a little bit more detail and some insight on what's going on. We hope uh, that you learned something or found out something maybe you didn't know or man, be a little bit more patient now with your friends over at the city hall please please be patient with them it's not a it's not pleasant they don't trust me they don't want to hold your bill no (laughs) (laughs) that's not that that's not the idea and uh they'd love it to get back to normal as well so uh anyway we uh, do remind people if you do have a question about your utility bill or usage 729-4117 is that number um don't call your alderman. They can't answer that question. Yeah. Um, you know, even as much information as, as the city tries to give the alderman, there's, they're still not going to know what it is today. Yeah. So call them, and they can help you out there a lot more than they can. If you're trying to call your alderman, it's just not going to do you any good. I mean, you can tell them that, you know, you haven't got your bill, and they'll, they understand that, that they haven't got theirs either. Uh-huh. <laughs> but maybe by tomorrow you might have it. Uh, maybe we'll see yeah never know some people may yeah some people may not so you should be getting your bill here i would say by the middle of next week um hopefully if everything goes well we got that holiday in there you never uh, know what happens with the mail with the holidays yeah <laughs> sometimes it's pretty amazing uh-huh so who knows Anyway, thank you, sir, for coming in. Thanks Appreciate for having me. that. Uh, Brad Nash pays for this program out of his pocket. He does not yes. expend any city dollars or tax dollars that are not used to pay for this program. And we do thank Brad for doing this to give you a lot more detail about what's going on, a little bit behind the scenes of what the problems are. And so, you know, we do hope that you uh, uh, take that to heart and uh, understand. And in the meantime, I want you to have a happy Memorial Day. Thanks. You do the same. Hope it's relaxing for everybody and everybody can too. have a little fun. And... Relaxing. Now, just remember, though, we, and we do need to still preface all this. We are still need to keep our minds and wits about us with the coronavirus. Yes. It's not gone. Uh-huh. And if you do travel, be aware that there are some areas in Missouri that have a lot more cases than others. Absolutely. Okay. So if you want to go to Paris, Missouri, you're probably in pretty good shape. However, if you want to go downtown St. Louis, you may run into a little bit more issues. Yeah. Or downtown Kansas City. So just keep that in mind. And doesn't mean I'm not telling you you can't go, and I'm not trying to warn you that you can't go. I just you just need to be aware. You know, keep your distance. Just Do make educated right decisions. Yeah. Use your head. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. We all good. I'm good. Good. Very good. Anyway, I want to thank you for joining us here at KSMO Radio on our Mayor's Moments with Brad Nash.